is our, uh, today's uh, series of respiratory mm -hmm. disorders and we are going to take you through a trip of uh, asthma, lower respiratory tract infections uh, followed by grand rounds. There are going to be surgical discussions on uh, head neck surgeries and uh, uh, lung uh, surgeries. Last, uh, we will have a series, we started off with GI series uh, three weeks back and that time uh, we had a seminar on GI, this time it's going to be on respiratory. And after your feedback that we get after this seminar, we are going to plan something on HIV and TB as well as one on vaccines. So we have not planned it as yet, we need a feedback from you as to how you find these series and then we go further with it. Now we are going to have a discussion on asthma, something which is very, very common that we are seeing in our uh, country. And uh, we are going to be number one country for asthma. So something to look forward to. We are number one in lots of things. We are number one in polio. We are number one in diabetes. And asthma is also going to keep us very busy. Now, why is this asthma uh, such a problem? It's the most chronic disease that one can come across. In fact, it's been said that around 300 million people are affected worldwide. And the incidence is definitely increasing. Lots of factors are causing it. Lots of pollution, lots of artificial things that we started using processed food that we started doing, these are all contributors towards asthma. Asthma is in children is on the rise. So we have to keep a watch for asthma in children. We will be coming to that. How could you define asthma? Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airways. There is a chronic inflammation that is going on in the airways. Now that inflammation is because of the mast cells that release histamine, leukotriene and various other cytokines that are causing asthma. So the most simple definition is chronic inflammation of the airways is asthma. Asthma in uh, other terms was also known as allergic bronchitis. Now bronchitis means inflammation of the bronchi. Inflammation of the bronchi can be infected, where we call it as infective bronchitis. Most common cause is viral bronchitis. Or it can be allergic, where we call it as allergic bronchitis or we label this child as asthma. Now, what happens when there is chronic inflammation? Chronic inflammation, the airways, you know, chronically inflamed. So, any stimulus there and they become very hypersensitive. So, they are very hyper-responsive airways. So, even one trigger, one small trigger and they become hyper-responsive. And because of the hyper-responsiveness, the airways start narrowing. So, you get an obstruction. So, you get a narrow airway only in the bronchi, not in the trachea. If it had happened in the trachea, the cell will die. Not in the bronchioles. Okay, bronchioles are also not getting. It's only the bronchi. So when the trachea divides into two parts, the bronchi get. Now because of this bronchoconstriction, there is mucus secretion, there is inflammation, there is obstruction that is taking place. And when does this occur? In the case of chronically inflamed bronchi, why is the child not uh, having symptoms persistently? Why is the child getting attacks of asthma? These attacks occur because these chronic inflammation gets aggravated by certain triggers. Now what are these triggering factors? Triggers are your allergens. Common allergens in India, dust mite, cockroach. This is something we can't eradicate. If uh, children or parents tend to have animals, dogs or cats in the family, they therefore can cause uh, allergic tendency. We nowadays get lots of these house cleaners that say one while whole dust is removed and all that, no stains and all that, but those are chemicals which can trigger an asthmatic attack. Pains, sometimes uh, children get with the smell of the pain, they get an asthmatic attack. Children do not smoke, but if anyone in the family is smoking and it's a secondary uh, passive smoking that is occurring, then tobacco smoke in itself trigger asthma. So when we counsel parents, we tell them, nobody should smoke. That is the most important thing. Carpets have to be vacuum cleaned. They should not have carpets because carpets are the area of dust mites. So they should ideally remove all carpets from the house. If they have carpets, then they have to be vacuum cleaned. Any URI is a trigger for asthma. So any child, normally you get a child who's come with cough, cold, fever, or young days, and then suddenly have breakfast. So this is a common uh, precipitating factor. And obviously when we give NSAIDs or aspirin, including erythromycin. Drugs like erythromycin can trigger asthma. So these are other factors that can trigger an asthma. 
Some children tend to get asthma by aggravated with exercise. So they can't do running or stress and all that. They get very depressed. Or stress is another factor that can cause this. So various causes of asthma. These are the various triggers. Obviously, there are lots of other triggers. And the most common thing that we tell our parents when we eat asthma is no outside food, no color in food, no preservation. So this when you tell them you are out with all your mechanics that contain color, you are out with all medications that contain preservatives and color. So even, even, even when you are uh, giving multivitamins, you have to make sure these multivitamins are color free. So there are certain medications that are available which are color free. Otherwise all your medications contain natural food. And the color to give you the yellow color. So you have to make sure that all of them are color free. So when we treat them, we tell them no color, no preservatives. So no dabba milk, no outside food, no color in food, no outside oil. Because oil is also reused oil. So no outside oil is another thing that they have to take care of. So Remember these areas are chronically inflamed. They are chronically Now if these areas are chronically inflamed, right? So when you get a trigger, that gets precipitated. You are able to hear me, right? So they get when you get a trigger. There is some secretion of the mucus and the obstruction and all that, and that's why you get attacks. You are, if you are going to treat attack to attack, you do not solve the problem. You have to solve the problem at a chronic inflammation level. That means you have to prevent this chronic inflammation from being there. That's why your treatment of asthma is are these inhalers or these rota inhalers, where you are trying to treat this chronic inflammation under control. If we were to treat only attack to attack, we would have only given salvitamol, aspirin and all that and kept it under control. But because you have to take care of this, that is the reason why you need to give them relievers. Now, when we treat asthma, there are two kinds of medications that are available. One are called as controllers and the other are called as relievers. Controllers means the ones who prevent a symptom. So that means the ones that take care of the chronic inflammation. So controllers are your steroids, then you have your uh, leukotriene antagonists that are your controllers. Whereas relievers are the ones which take care of acute episodes. So if I get an acute episode, I get some short course of steroids and I give uh, beta agonists. And these are my relievers. So you have controllers and relievers. Remember controllers are usually, when you see a controller medication, brown in color. I'll show you the medication. This is one NDI that I have. This is brown. If you see this, if you can see this, this is brown in color. So remember your controllers are brown. Where is your relievers are blue. This is blue. So even when we tell the patients, we don't tell them remember aspirin or remember video card. We tell them brown and blue. So if they remember brown is to be used daily and blue is to be used for emergency. So that's the way you can also remember it, brown and blue. Now before we go on to the treatment of asthma, what we have to do is identify asthma. Lots of times, Wheezing, we always think wheezing means asthma. That is not true. Wheezing can occur with lots of conditions. So we have to rule out other causes that are causing wheezing. So other causes that are causing inflammation of the bronchus. Most common is GR in children. So if there is reflux and the child aspirates, then that aspiration will cause irritation of the bronchus. And that is why you may get wheezing episodes with GR. So if a child who has failure to thrive and recurrent wheezing, think of GR provided he is having episodes of recurrent vomiting. So in a child with recurrent vomiting and wheezing, think of GR, rule that out. How do you rule out GR? By doing a milk scan. 
there is a radio nuclear scan. You give a radio nuclear milk for the child to drink, and you take scans over a period of time. And you take scans over a period of time, and you look for reflux. So if you see reflux occurring, you know it is a reflux disorder. Then you get certain respiratory infections that can cause these, which are known as Walry. W A L R I. Walry. These associated lower respiratory tract infections. This is common in children. You may get an RSV infection. You may get an adenovirus infection. You may get uh, any other infection, influenza virus, and that can cause respiratory tract wheezing. They can affect the bronchus and cause wheezing. They can affect the bronchioles and cause wheezing. So not every disease is asthma. In fact, when you say if a child has got infection with a wheezing episode, don't think of asthma. If a child has at least three episodes of wallery in a season, say summer season or winter season, then suspect asthma. So if with infection and wheeze, first episode, don't think of asthma. Infection and wheeze, three episodes in one season, think of asthma. Okay, then you think of Sinusitis. 20% of your sinusitis, of your asthma, sorry, 20% of your asthma are sinusitis. Now, why sinusitis should cause bees? Sinusitis is in the upper respiratory. Why should that cause a bees? That's because what will happen is these sinuses have a post nasal drift. When you have a post nasal drift, it goes into the bronchus and that causes. So 20% of your asthma is sinusitis. So before you label a child as asthma, you must do the X-ray of the paranasal sinuses. So before you start any child on a long-term therapy, you must rule out sinusitis. So do an X-ray of the paranasal sinuses. So either one mic or another mic. Then you will just Okay. Can you hear with this mic? Yeah. Even in the back, can you hear me? Almost you talk about that. That's it. Can you hear with only this mic? Now the other thing is sensitivity. Now the other thing is sensitivity and heart disease. That is the cause of cardiac easing, cardiac asthma. Why should congenital heart disease cause cardiac asthma? Is because pulmonary edema. So because there is pulmonary edema, these children tend to have wheezing episodes. So always hospitalize the child, make sure there is no more bomb. So these are the things you must rule out before you start a child on any long term therapy. Everyone follow that? Yes. Now, what is the diagnosis of asthma? When should you suspect asthma? Is it only wheezing? Yes, wheezing is one way that you will suspect asthma. Second is anyone who has recurrent difficulty in breathing, especially in the ninth time. So, more difficulty in breathing in ninth time, more tendency of cough in the ninth time. There are seasonal symptoms. Some of them get only in summer season, some of them get only in winter season. So, there are seasonal symptoms. There is history of allergy in the family. Most of us tend to ask uh, father, there is asthma in the family, or we ask any grandparents in asthma. Most of them reply some breathlessness was there. Don't ask for asthma, ask for allergy. So ask for dust allergy, ask for skin allergy, ask for breathing allergy, allergic and causing breathlessness. So ask for history of allergies. Also look for other allergies in the child. So look for atopic dermatitis in the child. Look for allergic rhinitis, allergic conjunctivitis. So these are the things that you all have to look for in such a patient. And obviously whether there is some precipitating factor to this attacks. So is it related to some food? Is it related to some allergen? Is it related to dust? So find out that. And whether these symptoms resolve after giving a nebulization. Most of us give wheezing episodes nebulization with salvitamol. Do they disappear? If they disappear, then you know this was asthma. If they don't, this is not asthma. Nowadays the trend is every LRTI is given now nebulization. So if I, even if I go into the past history and ask that you receive nebulization, everyone knows that I have received nebulization. So that becomes very difficult to analyze. If you get a patient at that time, analyze whether before the nebulization how he was, after the nebulization how he was. 
you wouldn't be able to analyze on his past history whether he responded to nebulizing because all of them get it. So we don't know the indication of the nebulizing. If we can do this, very good. If we can't do, at least on the clinical symptoms. Now what can we do? Look at spirometry. Spirometry cannot be done in children less than 8 years because you can't have that coordination in them. So less than 8 years, you won't be able to do spirometry. More than 8 years, if your FEV1 increases by 12%. After a bronchodilator. If it increases, then you know this is asthma. Similarly, you have a peak flow meter. All of you have seen a peak flow meter. I have not been able to get a peak flow meter, but it's an instrument where you give one powerful expiration. So you take a deep inspiration and then you just blow. And with one blow, how much ever you are able to blow out. So that's a peak flow meter. If you are able to increase that by 20%, suppose it was 300 ml and you were able to go up to 400 ml after a bronchodilator, you know this is asthma. Skin test, we all like to do, but skin test is really cumbersome. There are some 80 allergens that are usually tested, 80 to 120. And in a child, it's given a pick on the hand, and uh, you may need to do this test for one week, and look for a reactions. reaction. So it's not really something which is very feasible. Most of us will get allergies to something that we can't even realize. Like milk. If I get an allergy to milk, I can't stop milk in a child. So skin test usually you try to avoid until you are very sure that there is some particular allergen that is precipitating and you want to stop that exposure to that allergen. Serum Ig levels. Now ideally you are supposed to do specific Ig levels. We are not able to do that in our setup. So we do total Ig levels in these children. But ideally you should do specific IG levels. Now serum IG levels are an indicator.